Hi. This evening I thought we'd talk a bit about finding explicit formulas from tables. Now, we've done a bit of work with it in class, but I'm noticing that some people are still making mistakes because they're applying some rules of exponential table of exponential functions to linear functions and vice versa. So, what I wanted to show you were some things they have in common, so you can always use the same strategy, and then just tweak it a little bit based on what kind of function it is. Now, you'll notice I have two different functions here. I have function f, function g. Do not let the terminology throw you off, or better yet, the names. These are just names for our functions. This is func top one's function f, bottom one's function g. Reason is, you can't have two functions with the same name going on at the same time. So, that's why I have function f and function g. Don't let that throw you off. Okay, now, the two steps you want to consider, for each, no matter what a table looks like, is how do you get from one output to the next? And then, if it's addition or subtraction, now you're looking at a linear function. If it's multiplication or division, then you're looking at an exponential function. So, what we'll do is we're going to check it out in each table here. Now I get from negative 2.2 to negative 1.3, I have to add 0 0.9. Now let's see if this pattern holds up. Get from negative 1.3 to negative 0 0.4, again, add 0 0.9. Get from negative 0 0.4, negative 0 0.5, again, add 0 0.9. I have found my uh, the way to get from one output to the next, and it's addition here. Since it's addition, I know I have myself a linear function. Otherwise known as an arithmetic sequence. Notice how I'm throwing the vocabulary in there. Okay, now I've got a table down here as well. I'm just going to take this step, step two, I'm going to shrink it down a little bit so I can squeeze in some space here. Don't mind me. All right. Hopefully you're following along. You can even do this along with me. Just copy the tables and do it, do exactly what I'm doing. All right. So how am I getting from one output to the next here? Hmm. Now I get from negative seven to 56. I could add, let's see, uh, positive 63, but that's not going to work for my next step or my next step. However, no, being fairly good with multiplication, I know that I'm multiplying each time by negative 8. If you're unsure what you're multiplying by each time, easy way is just go with the two numbers first two numbers that look pretty obvious, like negative 7 to 56. All right, I know I multiply by 8. And then you can just check by doing some division out, like 56 going into 448. If you do out the division, you'll get 8. Same thing happens with the uh, next two uh, outputs there. All right, so since I know this is multiplication, I got myself an exponential function. A.K.A. A geometric sequence. It's good to identify these because chances are when you see us on a quiz, you're going to be asked when presented with the table, what kind of sequence is this? What kind of function is it? So getting it out of the way right away is a good idea. So I'm just going to shrink some stuff down here so I have a little more space. Okay. So now I want to figure out how I can write an explicit formula from this. Now, I figured out how I get from one output to the next. That's important. The next is, what is the initial value? Now, this is another important vocabulary word. It's not something you're familiar with. Your initial value here is your output when your input is zero. So what I do is I go to my function table here. Wait a second. I don't have zero as an input. That's going to happen quite often. You're going to have to find it yourself. But it's not that bad. You'll notice I left space in both of these. Now, if going forward I'm adding 0.9, to go backwards I'm going to use the inverse operation, the opposite operation, which is minus 0.9. I subtract 0.9 from negative 2.2, I'm going to get myself negative 3.1, which you notice I'm going to squeeze right in there. Oh, that looks awful. Let me try that again. Let's see. Here we go. 
just get a little bit bigger, right? There we go. Negative 3.1. Nice. Now, if you notice, I'm going to do it the same thing down here for my other function. I don't have an initial value of 0. I'm going to have to put that in there. Now, going forward here, hmm, I am multiplying by negative 8. The opposite of multiplying by negative 8 is dividing by negative 8. A lot of people get freaked out as soon as they say, wait a second, negative 8 doesn't go into negative 7. Mr. Gamash, what are you doing throwing this stuff at me? But guess what? I'm going to leave it as a fraction, because you know what? A fraction is just a lazy person's division problem. I don't feel like solving it, so I'm going to leave it as a fraction. So negative 7 over negative 8. And since I have two negatives on top of each other, they cancel out, so it becomes positive 7 eighths. See, that's not too intimidating. All you got to do is just leave it as a fraction. Everyone gets so nervous about fractions, they always just try and create decimals out of them. Fractions aren't bad. You're going to be seeing a bit more of them this year. So now I have my initial value, and I have how I get from one output to the next. Those are the biggest battles here. Now it's just a matter of filling in the blanks. Now, for my explicit formula here. Oop, not G. I want F. So I'm going to go with red, F of X. Now I'm going to start with my initial value. My initial value in this table up here is negative 3.1. My initial value goes first. You'll notice I'm going to bring that right down here. Now next, my change. I'm adding 0.9 each time. And this is a linear function, so 0.9 is going to be a coefficient here. If you remember that, that's a number being multiplied by a variable. So, again, it's not that bad. Just take your initial value, start with that, and then take that rate of change, and that becomes your coefficient in front of x if it's linear. Now, here's the thing. For exponential, it's not that much different. Again, I'm just going to use g of x because that's the name of this function. Don't let that throw you off too much. I'm going to start with my initial value. In this case, my initial value is 7 eighths. Again, I got that because that's my out output when my input equals 0. All right, so I got 7 eighths. Now my rate of change is times negative 8. So I'm going to write times negative 8. That's how it's changing from one output to the next. And now since this is an exponential function, guess where my x is going to go? I need an exponent for an exponential function. It goes right up here. And that's all it is. Again, don't be too intimidated here. Here are the things you need. You want to figure out how you get from one output to the next. Then you need your initial value if it's not given to you in the table. In some cases, you will have an initial value, but in this case, we have to work for it a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Once you get that initial value, that initial value always starts out your function. You'll notice my initial value here, negative 3.1, just like up here. My initial value, 7 eighths, just like right here in this table. And then after that, I'm putting how I get from one output to the next. In this case, plus 0.9, plus 0.9. And down here, I had, am I still going, yep, let's go with that color. Times negative 8, times negative 8. And now since this function is linear, which means when I graph it, it's going to give me a nice line, 0.9 becomes a coefficient, I just put my x right next to it. Right there. And what the heck, I'll do a different color. Make it nice and colorful. There we go. And here, since I have an exponential function, I know because it's going up by multiplication, I need an exponent for my function, so that's where the x comes from. It takes a little bit of practice. It takes a little bit of studying, definitely. But hopefully the more practice you get with this, it's will come a little bit easier to you. So remember, initial value, I get from one output to the next, and from there it's just kind of filling in the blanks. Good luck, and I hope this helps.